So far, every time we've wanted to make a change to our material, we've had to save it and wait for it to save, which takes time, and then it will update on the landscape. There is a better way of working than this though, uh, and it can allow you to kind of update things on the fly. You can create little sliders, um, you can have things change instantly. And it's all to do with how you set your material up. And to do that, you change things from being constant. So for instance, our roughness is a constant. It's a constant number of 0 0.75. And you can change it to a scalable parameter. So we're going to change it to a scalar. Uh, and then you'll be able to change that with a little slider, which will be cool. So we're going to get straight into that because uh, this step's going to be a little bit longer than the previous ones. So as I've said, this one here is, we can see, what's it called? It's called a constant. And we're going to convert this. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to convert it to a parameter. So I'll give that a click. And we can see now, annoyingly, it doesn't fit in the comment anymore. So let's resize that. Lovely. So this now is called a, um, well, it is, it's a scalar parameter. So if we wanted to search for a new one, we could search for oh, a better typing chain. So there's the scalar parameter. So we could just create a new one. We don't always have to convert from a constant, uh, but it's asking for a name. And this is, whatever you call this, will be what it's called when you're editing it in the material instance. So make sure you give it a descriptive name. So I'm going to call it, um, oh, hang on, let me click on it. There we go. So I'm going to call it roughness. And then I'll know what it's called. And then we can set up some um, values here. So the default value of 0 0.75 is what I had it set to previously. And I'm going to leave it at that. The slider minimum, I'm going to leave to zero because as I covered earlier, the roughness values go on a scale from zero to one. But what that means for the slider max is that I'm going to set that to one because I don't want this slider to go above one. Okay, so that's everything we need to do to set up the roughness as a parameter. So what I need to do now is save that. And when that's done saving, we're going to go back into the level editor and create an instance of this material that we can tweak on the fly. So that's done saving. Let's move back into the level editor and I'm going to go to my materials folder. Okay, so this now, because I've got parameters in it, I will start to think of this as my master material. So if you're working with materials like that, you don't actually assign your master material to the mesh. You assign an instance of it. So you can have one master material and create dozens of instances of that. And in fact, I've seen it done where someone just created one uh, one master material for their entire level and all the different things that they needed to put materials on were done with different instances. It was very clever, very efficient. Um, so what I'm going to do then is create an instance from this. To do that, I just need to right click on it and at the top there it says create a material instance, which we want to do. When it creates it, it will very much want to prompt you to name it. Now I'm happy with the default name of this, which will be the same name, but it'll add instance to the end. So M underscore landscape practice underscore inst for instance. And that will now allow me to make changes on the fly. But before I can see that working, I need to assign this instance to this mesh here. So you can see I've got the yellow outline, which means I've got it selected. And here is where it's telling me which material I've got assigned, which is the M underscore landscape practice. So that's my master one. So I'll just select the instance over here. And then using this little arrow, I can say, use that one instead. Lovely. So you won't see anything change because at the moment, the master material and the instance material are identical. But let's open this up. So we'll double click on it. It will probably try and fill the whole screen. Okay, so you can see that this has taken up the entire screen, which is not what I want because I want to be able to see both what's in here, this editor, and I also want to be able to see what's in the level editor so I can see what effect my changes are having. So to do that, I'm just going to drag this down here like so and now I can see all of the settings in here that I want to get to and I can see the landscape and that will show me what effect it's having. Okay so you can see the roughness parameter that we've set up is available but we can't yet change anything because we've not enabled this parameter so I'm going to tick that box and now it's ready it's all like okay let's do this. Okay so Let's just say that I wanted to do something ridiculous just to make the point. So let's say that this is set to 0 0.75, which is mostly nice, but let's say I wanted to make this 0 0.2. I can type that in, press enter, and that will instantly update on here. So I can see what effect that's having. 
Now I can also, you can see when I put my mouse over here, there we go, it will let me click and drag, which I would like to show you, but this is now the fourth time I've tried to record this little bit and it's crashing every time, which is driving me mental. So you can click and drag and it's worked for me every other time. I think it's because I've got the screen capture software on as well. Um, so I'm just going to give that a miss because I can't take it crashing anymore. It's making me die inside. Um, so you can now set this to whatever you want. So I think I actually prefer 0 0.8 on this. So a little bit rougher than I had it previously. And then when you're happy with whatever you've set that parameter to, you can save it. And that will stay like that. So that means that's something that you can change interactively whenever you want. It's really cool. What we're going to do is we're going to take it a step further in the next step. And what we'll do is we'll set up um, another parameter. Uh, with a, this is going to take a couple of nodes to do that and that's going to control how the tiling of the grass works so we can kind of make the grass texture bigger or smaller on the landscape so that's what we'll be covering next i'll see you there for that one thanks for watching if you really want to take your learning further than i can cover in this series then i highly recommend checking out plural site they have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using unreal engine 4 when I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.